wanted to do a quick walk and talk on my initial uh, observations here in Guadalajara. It's my first time visiting. I haven't been to Mexico in uh, over 10 years. And this is going to come from a perspective of me being an American, living in California, actually spending the last five years or so in uh, Southeast Asia, living in Thailand. So it's all going to be kind of connected and related to that. There's but these first 10 observations are general. I just like kind of just want to share something through f with fresh eyes. Uh, that experience is always fun. So uh, why don't we get into that? But before I do, why don't you tell me how you're doing? How are you handling the lockdown where you're at? Because, you know, I'm sure everybody has their challenges of what's going on. So share down below. I'd like to hear your story. But uh, yeah, let's jump into number one. Okay, so number one for me would be uh, going through the process of coming to Mexico. So I had to fill out a health declaration online. I called the airline and they said that I it's required to do. I thought for sure they would have like an online document that I'd have to fill out, but you have to do it online. And they said if I don't do it online, then I won't be able to uh, actually get in the country. So I went through that process, got the QR code, and then I got to the airport. And then at the airport, I was surprised that no one took a temperature check <laughs> at any point from uh, arriving to the airport to uh, boarding the plane. There was no temperature check or anything like that. Um, so I thought that was odd. But yeah, the flight was fine, came over. And then the next odd thing was when we got off the plane and I went through customs. Customs was like, um, how long are you going to be spending here? <laughs> because I heard in, uh, if you go to like places like Cancun, you won't get the full 60, uh, or I'm sorry, six months uh, visa. So they'll only give you like maybe 30 days or 60 days as opposed to 180 days. And um, yeah, so the guy was asking me, well, what am I doing? What am I, how long do I want to stay? And I said, I'd like to stay the whole six months. He's like, what? What are you going to do? <laughs> and I said, well, I want to, uh, you know, go to different places and spend some time there for a little while. And then he's asking me, well, how much money do you have? And I was like, well, I got 300 on me right now. <laughs> he's all in the bank. And I'm like, well, in the bank. I got maybe uh, 20,000, so, and he's like, oh, okay, and then he just, you know, said no problem, so I'm in. But the cool thing is that once you get your, uh, once they allow you in, they don't actually stamp, they don't actually stamp your, um, your passport, so there's no stamp or record in your passport. They just give you the, the slip that you fill out. For your visa on the plane they give you a portion of that to keep for your records and it shows how many days you're allowed to stay and when you when you came to the country so that's kind of cool you don't waste any pages in your passport i have a pretty fat passport i got the big one and only i have like a, a quarter of the pages left so this is great news for me i can save those pages for other trips but anyways so I just thought all that was kind of interesting how that went down, you know, not getting a temperature check. They didn't ask me for my QR code, <laughs> getting asked how long I was going to stay and for, for what reasons and all that. So, okay, observation number two. Well, what the first thing I noticed, this is just first impressions, right? So the first thing I noticed, everybody was calling me caballero. And I'm like, caballero. So, you know. If you don't know Spanish and you think of the first word that kind of sounds similar to that, you're thinking, well, maybe they're calling me cowboy, <laughs> caballero. But no, it actually means gentleman. But the way they use it here is just like sir. So, you know, do you need a taxi, sir? You know, necesitas un taxi, caballero. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I, I, it started to click. I just, I just not used to hearing this word, but, uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. All right, observation number three. 
There is a chain of convenience stores called OXO, which is O-X-X-O. And uh, OXO is just like 7-Eleven and it dominates here. And the reason I looked into it is for the next reason I'm gonna get into with the observations is it's a place where you're gonna be able to pick up uh, your cell phone service. But OXO was interesting. That's, that's also when I heard the word caballero every, every five minutes when I was trying to talk to the girl at the counter. So, uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's, kinda, it's kinda flattering and nice when you hear someone saying it, saying, calling you a gentleman every, every five seconds while they're talking to you, it's very pleasant. But uh, yeah, 7-Eleven doesn't dominate. In Thailand, 7-Eleven is everywhere, like on almost every corn street corner. So uh, that's kind of the same experience here with Oxo. All right, observation number four. So the two main services you could sign up for pretty easily is uh, AT&T and Telcel. And um, I'm going to give a shout out to Tangerine Travels. So I did a little research before I came and trying to figure out how how to get cell service here and I wanted to do a prepaid plan with no contract and it's super super easy so I went to OXO like they recommended uh, I got the Amigo plan that they have it's like Amigo unlimited except for you pick your data package but the calls and the texts are unlimited and the two high-end packages there's a um, is 1500 megabytes so over a gig and the other one is I think 5,000 megabytes so I'll give you the prices on those and it's super super cheap it's pretty much the same prices I was paying in Thailand and a heck of a lot cheaper than the US so they don't call sim cards sim cards here you have to ask for a cheap a chip or a cheap <laughs> and that's 29 pesos, which is about $1.50, so super cheap to get that. And then you pick your plan and pay for it up front. So I decided to go with the 1,500 megabytes, and uh, that only cost me 300 pesos, so $15. And I have full access to everything. And I did that right outside the airport. So I, I just sought out the, ex, the OXO that was nearby, and... Uh, Talked to the person, I talked to the cashier and told her what I wanted. And the process was simple. You just need an unlocked phone and you're good to go. And then, yeah, I also investigated AT&T while I was at the airport. And AT&T... AT&T is definitely more expensive. I think the starting price was 500 pesos. And... Um, I don't think it was the same amount of data either. So I'm super happy with the Telcel. It's, that's working out great. And um, yeah, I'd say get that as soon as you get off the, get out of the airport. Because I jumped on an Uber and it's like, how am I gonna contact or pick up an Uber? And then how am I gonna contact my host for the Airbnb? So getting my cell service was top of mind. And I'm really happy that that went really smooth. Okay, so number five is actually how fast is the internet here? I was very pleasantly surprised. It was almost three times faster than my home internet, at least back in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, yeah, it was 192 megabits per second according to speedtest.net, which is awesome because I'm doing a lot of uh, Zoom meetings and stuff and I need a fast internet con connection to get a good view. But yeah, check this out. There's like churches everywhere, even on side streets. <laughs> Cathedrals. That's a small one. There's a big one, I think, just around the corner. So maybe I'll go walk that way while we talk. But yeah, so internet speed's great here. Even the, even the on, on mobile, it was super fast, 4G. And then I got the 192 at home. I'm super pleased because connectivity is super important these days especially when you're in a big city and you don't know where you're going and you're doing research looking around like what's going on in here so yeah I am kind of looking for spots to get a haircut 
little hair salon here with some senoritas. And then you got a little barber shop. I might have to come back and check out. ¿Cuánto para cortar? Cien pesos. Okay, gracias. So yeah, I was just, there you go. Now I know a hundred uh, pesos for a haircut. So it's five dollars. Super reasonable. Number six is gonna be uh, tacos versus burritos <laughs> here in Guadalajara. So it's an interesting situation. Actually, this place right behind me is, I believe, a vegetarian, yeah, a vegetarian taqueria. So there's actually vegetarian stuff all over the place. But people are meat eaters here for sure. And um, the reason why I bring up tacos versus burritos is because in California, burritos are super, super popular. But not so much here, which is really surprising. I mean, I was having this big, long conversation with my Uber driver. And um, all she would talk about is tacos. <laughs> I was asking about burritos and uh, they're like, oh, you mean with the, with the flour tortillas? <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, burritos usually come with flour, tortillas. Oh yeah, let me backtrack here. I saw this spot yesterday. I'll let you look over my shoulder here. Very cool cafe. I want to come back there. Looks like a good spot just to chill with a friend. And uh, have a nice long extended conversation. But anyways. So... That was, that was the first part of the taco burrito conversation I thought was interesting. But then when I actually went to some of the local street food vendors and taquerias here, the first thing you notice right away, so in California, like I said, we have a lot, a lot of Mexican restaurants and the tacos are served to you. When you order your tacos, you're just telling them what meat you want and they'll serve you. So you'll get like, two small tor corn tortillas, the meat you want, some onions and cilantro basically, and then you put on the, the salsa later at, if they have like a salsa counter. So that's what I'm used to. And, um, but not here. Here you basically tell them what meat you want. You'll get your, you'll get one tortilla, not two, which I found to be an issue already because if it's a big uh, taco and you have salsa and all that, the, the one tortilla just breaks apart on you. And then they give you a spoon, if you want a spoon to eat the, the little pieces. <laughs> so anyways, you get one tortilla and meat. And then they bring you out a bunch of bowls to put your own toppings. And they have like a good variety of toppings, more than what you would get if they made it for you, if they prepared it for you. And they have an assortment of salsas too. So you're basically creating your own. And... Uh, Let's take a little walk over here. Whoops, I gotta watch out for the bikers. <laughs> Sorry. And I have to remember to speak Spanish. All my courtesy comments are always in English. But uh, anyways. So, where was I? Tacos served to you. Yeah, so anyways, there, there's not much more to tell about that. Look at this, Empanadas Argentinas. I have no idea what that is, but I do want to check that out. And then, uh, let's jump to the next one. So, number seven. This one's kind of wild and different. Uh, at least I'm not used to it again. And again, in California, a lot of Mexican restaurants. So, I'm familiar with the torta. Our torta is kind of like a Mexican sandwich. You could maybe kind of look at it like a Philly cheesesteak, you know, but you could pick like, it could be like a sliced piece of grilled uh, chicken breast, or it could be some carne asada with cheese and avocados and a little bit of salsa, which is super delicious with a toasted bun. So I'm familiar with torta, but everything here is lonche. What the heck is lonche? <laughs> So I asked, 
I asked, what, what is this lunch? I go, is it, a, is it a torta? And the lady's like, you know, in Mexico City, they call them tortas. In Guadalajara, they call them lunches. But she says there, there are some tortas here, but they only call those uh, tortas mojadas which is basically the same thing, but they wet them. It's like, a, if you're familiar with like a wet burrito, this is a basically a wet sandwich. <laughs> and um, I haven't tried the wet one yet. I've tried a few of the normal lunches. And it's kind of funny because you have taquerias or taquerias, and then you have loncherias. <laughs> so you, you could go to a loncheria. They just specialize in, in those. And they have a good, good, uh, good menu. I'll post a picture of that. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just found that uh, you know, interesting, something new, something different. All right, number eight is cafe culture. There's a lot of cafes. People love to just spend time at cafes and hang out with their friends and just talk, talk, talk. Um, where I live, there's actually two cafes below. There's a small little quaint one, which is kind of hipsterish and cool. People just hang out there, and the next door is like a kind of like a deli cafe, where they'll serve you up some food and stuff. And both are always busy throughout the day. And then if you walk around, there's other cafes, and it's the same thing there. So cafe culture is big. You'll even see someone bring their guitar every once in a while and start singing, so it adds to the ambiance. But uh, yeah, so your cafe culture and music, it's pretty cool, something different. You know, you just don't have your uh, laptop warriors at Starbucks. You actually have people socializing. How, how, uh, how novel. <laughs> people actually socializing in person over, over a drink, over a nice latte. So that sounds good to me. Okay, number nine is actually street signs. They're horrible here. Here's an exception. This is the main intersection. You see the big green sign, normal street sign. I could read this. I know what's going on. But you know what they actually look like? Like this guy. That little blue square, that little blue sign with that tiny writing. Imagine being in a car on this street. I mean, what, what is this? What street am I on? <laughs> This is exactly the problem. So having Google Maps on your phone kind of directing you and looking at your screen to see where you're walking is a huge help because the street signs are very easy to miss and uh, from a distance not easy to read. So, uh, yep. I think we're almost done with the list. How's everybody doing? Are you guys hanging in there? Hope you're finding this interesting. Yeah, so uh, number 10, this one's actually uh, about the weather. So funny story, I have an electric skateboard and I was thinking about bringing it with me because I love it. I use it to go everywhere. It's like the best micro commuting device out there, better than an electric scooter. And um, I really, really wanted to bring it, but um, they wouldn't allow it on the plane. It, the battery is just too big and it's too dangerous. So, it would have been a bad idea anyways. It turns out, it's September right now, and September is kind of rainy season here. And I heard that, and I said, you know what, it's probably not a good idea to bring it, I just left it. But then when I got here, I actually saw what rainy season is like. <laughs> and rainy season is a lot like Thailand. I was shocked. So in Thailand, you have, you know, big, heavy, tropical rainstorms with beautiful, thunderous, you know, lightning and thunderstorms going on that scare the crap out of you, but they're like so cool and awesome. And here, I haven't seen the lightning and thunder, but... The downpours, oh my god. <laughs> it's, 
And the thing is, it's like like right now, if you look, it's kind of overcast, right? There's some some clouds. You just don't know when it's gonna come. You know, it won't rain for a while and it's like totally overcast. And then all of a sudden, boom. It's like turn, someone turned on the shower <laughs> and it's just pouring rain on you. But you know, that's all good. Another thing like Thailand is that when these things do happen, the streets just get completely flooded. And um, I mean, luckily I have my boots on. But here you can see a, an intersection. These little intersections turn into a swimming pool. You know, like five inches of water to try to cross the street. So your boots, even if you're wearing boots, no matter what, they're getting drenched. Your socks are gonna, you know, get filled. Your boots and your socks are just gonna be damp with water. It's just no fun. But um, yeah, I pretty much carry an umbrella with me if I go out and about. And um, yeah, so there's that. <laughs> It was fine, you know. I, I'm not. I have no problem with rain. I'll, I'll. I'm happy to walk with rain even without the umbrella too. But um. Oh yeah, here I'm saying about cafe culture. You can look over my shoulder here. And if you notice, there is a lot of graffiti, a lot of artwork, which is kind of cool. All right, so the weather. So yeah, the rain, but it, actually the weather, the temperature is awesome in Guadalajara. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, so we're very, very spoiled with the weather. I mean, it's, so let me, let me give you an example. Here, it's pretty much 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning. And then once the sun comes out, Usually just in the 70s. I mean, it doesn't get any more perfect than that. You know? 60 is a great temperature to wake up to in the morning. It's a little chilly, but not too cold. You just put on a little sweatshirt, a hoodie, whatever. And then during the day, it's you walk around in shorts or jeans. Your choice, because it's not that cold and it's not that hot. The only difference is that It's just a little bit more humid, which is weird. So uh, if you can already imagine the 60 and 70, look at this. They have a house of waffles here. It's called La Casa de Waffles. <laughs> and then over here, we've got some uh, boulangerie. Yeah, I mean, they got a little everything. It's kind of international around here. And there are some tourists. I'll talk about how things are for tourists during lockdown. I know that got a little loud. I was saying that I'll talk in the future about, you know, what it's like here for tourists during lockdown. Hmm. Let's just casually walk through. La Cafeteria. Yeah, this place is always busy. I think it's also a breakfast place, so you have La Casa Waffle over there. La Cafeteria over here. The Boulangerie over there. Yeah, you got a little bit of everything here. It's quite nice. So anyways, post your questions and comments down below. I'd like to hear what you think and uh, thought of all this. If you have good questions, maybe I'll uh, answer them in the next video. So, till next time, subscribe, and I'll see you again. Take care, guys. Bye.